FM 94, The Dark. It is that time again. It's time to get to know a band we play here on The Dark. And once again, a treat in studio tonight here on The Dark, another band. And we have a band out of Minneapolis. They're called Alarm for War. And in studio tonight, I have Buggy and Kisa. And also Mom is uh, joining me too here behind. We'll get a chance to talk to her in just a moment. But first of all, guys, uh, welcome to Little Falls. Welcome to The Dark. And how's everybody doing? We're doing great. How are you? I'm doing awesome, and I, I, this is the best part. I love in-studio interviews because I get to see you guys in person. Uh, I'm looking forward to some music coming up. You're going to do some acoustic with us here tonight, too. And uh, the best part of this whole thing is we want to lo- learn more about the band, and that would be your band, Alarm for War. So I don't know if you want to start, Kisa, or Buggy. Who wants to start? But give us the history of this band. How did it all come about? Well, maybe he should answer that. Let's start it out, buddy. Well, we, we kind of, we were in the, I went to the studio once. I made a studio trip, and I was 12 years old at the time. And a, a seasoned singer noticed noticed that I was singing right on key with what he was doing. So after that, he asked, hey, can this kid come in and do some backups with me? I thought that was really cool. So after that, I was asked, hey, can you do these songs? And then after having a really good time in the studio, um, the songs were awesome. Everybody seemed to really like it. The band started kind of forming after that. Wow, very cool. Now, you said 12, and the last notes that I had says you're now 13. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I recorded half the uh, album at the age of 12, and then I just turned 13 and then did the other half then. First of all, I have two 13-year-old daughters, and I I could never imagine them being out and about in the real world, I guess, doing what you're doing. Uh, What is it like, first of all, and I'm going to bring mom right in right away after that. What's it like, I guess, being a 13-year-old making music? And for everybody, for the world. Well, yeah, I, th- I just think it's really cool because when you look at all those other bands out there, I'm just trying to, you know, trying to live up to the standard of what's going on up there. So I just think some, a guy asked, too, he said, so what makes this band different? I think it'd be that I was a 13-year-old kid, front man. <laughs> so that's, that's probably the best way to answer it. So what influences, I guess, did you have growing up? And you're still growing up as we, as we speak. Uh, what influences, I guess, did you have in the music industry? Well, you know, I listened to a lot of P.O.D. Um, after we were done with the album, people started saying you sounded like these people, you know, Tech 9, um, Alice in Chains, P.O.D. And then I knew who P.O.D. was, but I suppose the main um, influence would probably be P.O.D. Okay. Now, Kisa, obviously, you're with the band. You're not 13. We can, not uh, maybe 14, you're 14. I was just going to say. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the element of having a youngster in the band, and I, I'm assuming your role is to, to help guide him along. Yeah, absolutely. We sit and practice through, and we work on timing things and things. I mean, he's just kind of starting out brand new. I, After he was in that studio session, uh, uh, Smitty sent me over the recording. He's our drummer. Yep. He sent me over the recording of what was done, and I, and he said, what do you think of this? He didn't tell me it was Buggy doing the singing. I thought it was uh, uh, one of these other guys that we had done before, but it was slightly improved over what he had done in the past, and I thought, sounds really good. And then when I found out it was him, I was just kind of shocked and uh we've been going at it hard ever since and every time we get together to practice and rehearse his level just keeps bumping up higher and higher and this this music is not easy to play um we as part of our style is not only the harmonic complexities of the scales of things that we use but also the the timing and the synchronization of this stuff is not elementary school or even high school this is like let's see if we can mess you up right (laughs) so it's crazy because I've talked to a lot of young performers, but a lot of them have been into the school of rock and they've gone through stuff like that. I'm I'm guessing that you haven't done any of that whatsoever, Buggy. Am I correct on that? You are correct. Yep. So you're you're the old Buggy school of Buggy, basically is what we're talking <laughs> about, right? It's kind of genetic that's with him. Funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's pretty much what it is. You're kind of creating your own sound, then, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I suppose that'd be a good way to put it. Yep. And now, did you have any help with mom or dad? Because I think your dad is in the band. Obviously, your mom's along with. Did you, they have musical backgrounds at all? Yes, they, they have. She, she, my mom actually sings pop, um, stuff like that. So in the studio, it was just really fun. Um, she was helping me put stuff together, just making sure everything was turned out. So yeah, I had, I had, I had help in the studio. I had a blast. Let's bring. I was, let's, I was, sorry. Go ahead. Let's bring in your mom for a sec here. Okay. How Hello, you, how are you? How are you doing? Very good. Doing here. good. What's, uh, what's it like, first of all, having a son that uh, is out on the road mm-hmm. 
performing music i mean i'd be freaked out first of all i guess as a a parent but uh (laughs) what's it like well you know it's kind of funny you should say that because you know he's very grounded you know he's very grounded he's very smart it's funny because you know as far as social media and things that kids get on so much nowadays he's not really a part of all that he just you know he reads he does his work he does his schoolwork. that's all important to which i think is good and then he loves his music you know he loves to rap he just raps wherever he goes around the house and uh, we're just happy to be with him along for this ride. I think the difference is, you know, a lot of what we see out there nowadays, a lot with a negative message, his music and what we're bringing forth is a positive message. Right. So it's kind of the other side of the spectrum. A lot of times you see, you know, a music that promotes all the negativity that you can see out there. Well, we're trying to bring hope and truth in everything that we say and do. So I think that kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. And it is kind of a unique thing, you know, when you're looking at your kid who's all of a sudden taller than you and just kind of shooting up and really getting out there. But we're proud of what he's doing and uh, we're excited to be along for the ride. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, that's the cool thing. At least uh, you guys are along for the ride and getting to see this journey that he has. And you have brothers too, correct? Yes, sir, I do. I have um, I have three brothers, uh, ages uh, 12, let me see if I can, 9 and 7. Okay, so you're the oldest, of course. That's right, yep. <clears throat> so they look up to you then, right? Yeah, Yes, sir. That's what you're going to say, at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do they? I guess what do they think of this whole thing going on? Because you've been doing this for a little over a year now. It sounds like. Well. Yeah, they they really like it. You hear my uh, my brother. He's he just um, doing guitar. The twelve year old. He's he's doing his guitar. He's like, hey, I'm getting this stuff. And sometimes he'll be around the house. He's rapping the songs to him. Like, nice. So he's getting good at that and stuff like that. So yeah, they're awesome. So is there uh, maybe future plans when uh, everybody gets older that they all go together as a band and then you kick out the old guys? Uh, no, no, right. Nothing, nothing to say. There, you know? <laughs> I train myself it's, out of a job kind of, here. It's kind of actually funny because I just realized this a couple of weeks ago. But I'm actually I sing, and this wasn't even planned at all. But I sing, and my little brother, the seven year old, he's he's just he's kicking on those drums. He's okay. really getting the drums. And my brother is a guitar player, and the uh, and my other brother, he is actually playing to get a bass. So it's kind of I'm like, wait a second, that makes a whole band. So yeah, you got the whole funny. band. You guys awesome. probably never heard of the Partridge Family before, have you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, you could pull out some of those bands uh, that were uh, obviously family bands, and Partridge is be one of them, yeah. of course. Uh, that would be cool, though, if you could do that. Of course, uh, Kisa wants to be a part of this, too, though, don't you? Of course. <laughs> of course, yeah. Hey, let's talk about, you, you, your mom mentioned about the, the music that you're playing and that, and it has some inspiration in that. Give us a little take on that, I guess, and where what is the music, kind of the meaning behind some of the songs that you have, and of course, one of the songs that you're that we're spinning on our airwaves is called "Day Turn to Night." Uh, that is one of many that you have. But what's kind of, I guess, the story behind some of these songs? Well, um, you see, Day Turn to Night was a kid. He was hooked on drugs, and he was told to stop. Or one day, he was told it just might cost him his life. And after he was doing drugs in a bathroom, he was found dead on the floor. And then standing around his dead body, someone in the crowd shouted out, where's your God at now? And then someone else said the same place he was when he was warning him. So as my mom said earlier, we're just giving out a positive message of hope and truth, of love and not hate, and um, hope to do that with our, with all of our lyrics and with all of our music. You know, and uh, you know, obviously we didn't know when we set up this interview that there were going to be some passings of what happened recently in the rock industry of Chris Cornell passing away. And now Chester Bennington passing away. And one of the, the big things, and we, we saw this back in the, the 90s, and then Kisa probably remembers this with the Kurt Cobains and the right. Lane Staley's and that, where you had the suicides back then. But you're seeing it again. Uh, it's kind of that hidden uh, taboo thing to talk about. Right. But uh, depression is such a huge thing in today's society yeah. and i think music really needs to find a way to step up and you guys could probably help that out can't you that's a great point i work in adult mental health and have for quite a while and um that awareness of mental mental health being an illness and not a stigmatized right. you know shameful thing you know if there's something wrong with your body you have a cold or you're sick you go to the doctor for that if there's no shame in it a lot of people want to hide if they have some depression things to deal with they don't want to be labeled like that they just want to be seen like that so it's important to realize that that's just a another health condition that needs to be treated and obviously you you're just talking about the uh, song day turn to night with the drugs mm-hmm. and that a lot of times people that are depressed turn to that don't they they turn right. to the drugs yeah. the alcohol and that that eventually could turn out to be the end of their life yeah get some escape from that pressure and that feeling they have of not wanting to be alive you know so they go to the drugs and then 
and then that happens. You know, a lot of those drugs will, uh, due to your body, it's not so much that they like attack you. It's just they may re- make you relax so much that you your body doesn't even breathe anymore. So, I think a lot of times that can be unintentional. That suicidal part when it goes that far. Of course, sometimes it is too. But it is. Um, I've played in bands with. I, I played in a band with a guy that overdosed on heroin years ago. Right. And, it's devastating. So it is. So it's a, there's something right there, inspirational that you can maybe try to lift people up to in your music that uh, is uh, that you're currently doing, or maybe down the road too. Some uh, yeah. some things to write about too. Let's talk about writing in that. I guess how does that all come about? Who's behind the writing of the music in that? Well, it's kind of a combination between all of us. You know, we have the rapping in the studio, and then in the studio we're like, hey, let's add this, let's add some singing to it, and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a combination of all the band um, working together to put together the lyrics. Okay. And uh, the name Alarm for War, uh, I'm kind of curious about the the history behind this name. Uh, how did it all come about? Well, it actually comes from the book of Jeremiah in the Bible. Okay. Um, it basically, uh, Jeremiah was telling the Lord, I'm being the alarm of war, and they're not listening. So we're basically, that's what we feel we're doing is kind of sounding the alarm and give, giving people the message of hope and truth, as I said earlier. Why did you choose, I guess, the rap side of things, I guess? I mean, you know, that's something that I love asking, too, you know, kind of the different genre of music. Mm-hmm. I mean, you went with the rap slash kind of rock, metal yes. rap, rock, whatever however you want to call it. Uh, why did you choose to go that route? I think it's a very fresh thing. Um, I, I know there's some bands that have done that type of thing before. Right. But when we were doing things where we had like a powerhouse singer in there, it tended to sound dated and just like you've heard a lot of that stuff before. And, and when we brought this in, especially Sam's perspective or coming at it at 12, 13 years old, really came across as a really fresh, different sound. Um, and I think that's important today. Um, that's what makes bands succeed i think is when well not only not only they have to have their own sound but to to move people when they hear the music they got to feel something and um as soon as he started rapping like that then we hear the songs and be like i feel this right you know? and if that's all we can go on if we feel it we can hope other people can feel it too so okay let's make people feel it right now right let's right. i know you guys want to do is play some acoustic with us here so uh, let's have a, a song here what's the first one you're going to do uh, for this me? one's going to be called uh, love and not hate okay one. love it not hate okay. sorry to interrupt you oh that's fine all right, we're gonna do which one? We're gonna do I'm we're gonna down. do number we're gonna two. Do control of my mind. Control of my mind. There we go. Right. Control of my mind. Since uh, Keith is already in tune here, and of course the band is called Alarm for War, and uh, they're a band out of Minneapolis. Uh, we'll talk about much more of that coming up here in just a moment. But right now, I've got a little acoustic here on FM 94's The Dark. Shoulda known better than to mess with him. G-Money Funk Master goes up into his house, yo. Shiggity shoulda know better. We biggity bringing it on. Dave, Ben, after B, got since the age of three. Doing all they can to indoctrinate me. Was in everything. For me, you make a seat to TV. The classic messes, fast seats in history. Trying to shake for B, Ben, they found it on. But they fake, so that's why we pawn it on. Their hypocrisies, like and perverted fantasies. Let them know you can have control of me. You can have control of my mind, as gods. You can have control of my mind, as gods. You can have control of my mind, as gods. You can have control of my mind. No better than to turn away. Should've known better. So now you're gonna pay. Should've known better than to mess up the guy, Gale. Should've known better than to mess up the man. Politicians hit they all that, no bag of chips But we see the old crap, and we declaring it No matter where we gone, the people be hearing it from the pulpit to me give it to song you can never forget Very nice, very nice uh, We don't have a big audience here, but hey, I'm still clapping on that one, alright? Very, very nice I like that. I like that. And definitely you can you can feel the passion. That's the one thing I talk about bands a lot, too, is the passion that they have. And you have to have that to make music. If you don't have it, you can see right through it that you're a fake, can't you? Absolutely, yeah, that, that emotional thing. I think that, that was the founder of MTV a long time ago said that if we can get them emotionally, we got them. And, and sometimes that wasn't always a good thing with MTV, but that's what... Um, 
that's what the music needs to have. I studied music, and you can do everything quote unquote right. You can get the chords right, and that everything's in key, and the lyrics are nice, and everything can be on paper look like it's working. But you listen to it, and if you don't feel something, you're you're done. Right. So that's what I think makes music so incredibly rewarding and challenging and frustrating, and everything all wrapped up into one let's talk about the uh minneapolis scene of music well you know i'm up here at little falls a couple hours away i kind of know some of the vibe and that of it but uh, you guys are living right in it well, what is the scene right now for music in minneapolis oh that's a good question too i think a lot of um i did a lot of uh, stuff in the minneapolis scene and in, in different cover bands and a couple of original bands um throughout there and it, slowly over the years I think it it started dying out with the live music scene. I think it started with uh, raising the legal drinking age, um, cracking down on DWIs, all great stuff, um, but just took its toll. People were, like, too afraid to go out. You know, you can't go out and drink. Uh, Thankfully, there's things like Uber and things like this now, so people aren't driving drunk. Right. Um, But I've heard from other people now that are more in that scene, too, that a lot of it is moving to casinos that... Um, casinos have uh, what we, we quote somebody said they they print their own money there. <laughs> <laughs> they got so much money coming in they can fund these concerts and I'm I'm grateful for it because anytime you have live music out there I think it's great. Um, supporting live music, I'm a big supporter of live music. I've right. I've loved it for years. So let's talk about the live music aspect, Buggy. Uh, have you had many concerts live in front of people? Is it kind of a new thing for you? I mean, where where are we at with that? Yeah, well, it's it's kind of a new thing, but I think live we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun live. There's gonna be a lot of crowd interaction. And what, exactly what's um I'm sorry, excuse me. What's on the tape is what to expect live. So we're I'm looking forward to the live shows. You know, I get, let me ask you that. You, you, what do you expect? What are you thinking? What's in your mind? What do you, I mean, you haven't done a lot of the live shows before. So what is your, what is your expectation of when you're up there? What do you think? Well, I guess, what is your anticipation? Do you have in your mind a vision? And then, you know, maybe in six months, I'll talk to you again and say, Hey, was that vision (laughs) what you had? I mean, what do you think? I guess it's going to be like when you're live. Well, as, as I said earlier, I'm really looking forward to it. I just think I haven't seen uh, many, live shows in my life but i think that you know just going up on stage and being liberated and just kind of feeling the music and doing everything with the crowd and the wave and everything i'm just i'm, I'm kind of, i'm looking forward to it and then you just kind of you just kind of anticipating what's going to happen but i'm sure once once you know we get out there we'll take a couple minutes and we'll be fully in you know it. and one thing is if it's one thing kids are good at it's having fun yeah um kids got that down i um and and a uh, big quote in our group here is that if we're not having fun, we're not doing it right. So I think uh, the rest of the band is up there, seasoned guys that have been right. on stage a lot before and had a lot of fun with it. Um, we're looking forward to see what Sam does up there. Besides the band obviously helping you out, Buggy, is there somebody else influencing you, helping you out, at least to be a front lead singer? Well, yeah, my mom kind of helps me out on that, um, okay. you know, doing that. And also, too, I just, as I said uh, earlier, um, influencing about P.O.D., yeah. just kind of watching some of those music videos. As a matter of fact, just a couple of days ago, I was watching the live show just to kind of get uh, some ideas. Actually, when we did the music videos, I was kind of watching that, but I just kind of like, I just, when I went out there, I was just like, it was just kind of like natural, just like you just kind of right naturally do stuff. Yeah, yeah fell right into place. So, um, so have you had a chance yeah. to meet Sonny at all or not? From uh, no, I haven't. No. Okay, so yet. that's uh, Sonny. If you're listening, uh, there's somebody that wants to definitely check you out. Okay, they want to meet, right? Love to do a live Buggy show. Buggy Sonny you guys. wants to meet. Exactly. Okay, that would be awesome. Yeah, and how many hours did you spend in the studio where people are belting out those those songs? Listen to it all day. You probably wanted to go home hours before, and you're still there, and you're like. <laughs> Just start singing along, got to do something, and here it is, right? So it leads into my next question about playing live, and I already figure out one band that you're going to want to play live with. That would be P.O.D., of course. But if you had to pick your ultimate bill to go out with on a tour and play live with, give me like two or three other bands that you would love to go out with, Buggy. I'll give you first, Buggy, and then I'll maybe get a different perspective with Kisa over here. Perfect. So. Yeah, I, um, I love to do a tour with P.O.D., yep. Um, love to do a tour with Megadeth, and I think those would probably be my my top two. It's just kind of Megadeth is kind of a lot like, it's kind of a lot like us. He's just kind of like shouting, so like like the aggression of it and stuff like that. So I don't listen to that kind of music. It'd just be awesome to go out there and do that kind of thing. With well, the cool guys. thing about Megadeth is there's a Minnesota connection there with David Ellison. He's from Jackson, Minnesota. 
So, oh, really? yes. Cool. He's absolutely, yeah. And he actually had just started a coffee shop down in Jackson, Minnesota here not too long ago. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah, I think yeah, it's called really. Ellefson's Coffee or something like that just a few months ago. So there's a connection, a Minnesota connection right there. And, in fact, maybe I'll have to talk. I, actually, I know Dave a little bit, so maybe we'll have to chat. <laughs> that would be yeah, kind of fun. that'd be awesome. We could do that. All right, let's get on the other side here now. And, Kisa, who would you love to have uh, you guys go out with on tour? Gosh, you know, we, we talked about um, w- what we really want to do is get get – on tour with a band that sounds enough like us that the style is familiar right but different enough from us that we're fresh in that respect and i've heard us uh compared to rage against the machine and that kind of a sound um and then they're actually talking about putting us on a tour on the east coast here we're, we're still waiting to find out about that but okay some of the guys from that group um I don't even know all the guys <laughs> that what they're doing and everything else but any i'm just excited to get in front of any audience you know i think yeah, I'll take anything. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, is there a, a song or songs that you really enjoy playing, that you in, really enjoy doing live? Or, I mean, or at least, what's one of your favorite songs? Yeah, um, I'd say Love and Not Hate, which we're going to play for you, and uh, Control of My Mind, that'd be easily my top two. Those two, huh? Okay. Yeah, oh. and we got our radio day turn tonight. That's a really fun one, too. All of our songs are fun to play, too, on guitar. They're aggressive you- and... You, know. you mentioned the day turn tonight. What I guess in that uh, has been uh, streamed out to radio and that from the play. Hey, we played on these airwaves. Uh, what other stations have been playing? Have you been getting good response, good feedback off of that? Have you had a chance to really dive into that much? Yeah, we, we have. What's cool about it is actually going on on the radio, our publicist is telling us sometimes they'll listen to it and they'll be like, um, I don't really like that rap, but oh, wait a second, there's singing on there, so you win them over by the singing, and then when there's singing, if they don't necessarily like the singing, they like the rapping. So we've been getting we've been getting good responses on those, especially on uh, social media. Now, music is one thing you like to do, but we heard you did like to play sports too when you were a younger kid, right? What about a year ago or so? Yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> younger, way back. In the and, day. and mom said you were a pretty good baseball player too. Yeah, right? I like. Um, I really, I really do like baseball. And after that, I kind, I kind of like football too. Not necessarily. The, um, I probably wouldn't necessarily want to play it because I wouldn't want to get hit all the time. But <laughs> I like, I like playing. I like um, throwing the football. So I'd probably baseball and football. I play that. So. Okay, so you're. 13, so you're probably, what, a 7th grader, 8th grader? Uh, I'm going into ninth. Ninth grade, okay. Uh, okay, that's cool. Uh, so high school then? I'm homeschooled. Oh, homeschool, yeah. okay. I was just going to ask. That's the next question. Well, how do you – let's have mom and, and get involved in this. Well, yes, he is homeschooled, which is one of the advantages of yeah. being able to be on the road because then you're on the road and you can do your schooling while you're on the road. But as I mentioned before, you know, Buggy's very smart, so – even though he is only 13, he is at a ninth grade level. He's going to be getting that here in the fall time. So, yeah, that is a definite advantage to being on the road. And, you know, it's kind of like, hey, do your work. But he really does it all himself. He's kind of motivated himself, which is good. He's a leader in that respect. So it's nice to see that it's, you know, it's music. You kind of got to balance. There's a music and the right. fun aspect of things. But then there's also the, you know, got to get in the books and got to learn something because we got to feel our brains. You know, and yeah, be yeah, smart yeah. for what we're doing. In, in the bus, in the bus, we'll be doing that too. So it's fun doing that in the bus. You know, you're in your bunk and you're doing your work. Hey, what are you doing down there? So it's awesome. So your brothers are homeschooled too then? They are, yep. Yes, very, sir. very cool, very cool. I was just going to ask, that was the next question on the school side of things. Well, you, you answered that at least. So right. what you got? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I would say, yep, they're all homeschooled. So they all get to be a part of it. And they just love being in the bus and on the road. Well, that's that's huge. I mean, if you're going to make it somewhere, you're going to have to. It's it's not glamorous. Let's put it this yeah. way. I've talked to many bands, and uh, they're they're not dry. They're not uh, they're not Bruce Dickinson in their airplanes. You know, their seven forty sevens for Iron Maiden, right. flying around and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, right you're in some crappy vehicles at times. You looks like you got a pretty nice vehicle out yeah. here, though. That bus looks pretty nice. Uh, I mean, we uh, did. A, I remember doing a show once with Disciple. Um, ah. years ago, right? And, and they're a great band, loved the band. They pull up in this cool bus, and I was thinking the same thing. What a life they're living, you know? And I said, can I come and check out your bus, you know? And they said, sure, come on in. And they opened the door. It looked like it, it, it had the image of people living homeless under a bridge in there. <laughs> there was like an old futon on the floor, old fast food wrappers. I, there wasn't a place to sit. I don't know. I don't know how they survived. So. <laughs> well, let me ask this question for Buggy then. Uh, who's the messiest in your house? 
Or in your bus. I don't think I don't think there's we all we all take care of what we got. So you you go in our you go in our house, you go in our bus, it's spotless and clean. I mean, even my little my little brother, he's like I'm like, Hey Christian, there's nothing there's nothing on there. And he took this the broom and he's like sweeping all that stuff up. He's a clean freak, so we're all clean freaks. <laughs> so is that uh, because of mom or because of dad? Well, we just like I said, we 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 take care of our stuff. Sometimes you get a little pushed by mom or dad by doing that, but <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, we're all clean freaks. That's okay. That's okay. Hey, we're talking to the band Alarm for War. You guys have another single here for me that you want to play, at least another acoustic. Well, let's get to that. Let's get Sounds you all better. tuned up, ready to go on that. And, of course, uh, these guys are out of Minneapolis uh, making a swing in radio right now to different venues, just a, a lot, basically radio stations to uh, get their word out there and get, uh, let people know who they are and we're going to talk to them in just a moment how you can find out more information about this band, too. And hopefully maybe we'll bring you back here since Mom has ties to Little Falls, too. Yeah, yeah we should bring awesome. that. Let's bring that in for a second. Well, you yeah. guys are getting all ready. Mom, give us the background of yourself. Uh, you do have some ties. Uh, let the listeners out there maybe that are listening right now know who you are, really. Well, it's kind of interesting that we began here in Little Falls because I grew up in Little Falls uh, from a youngster all the way till in eighth grade and I moved over. So when you talk to some of the people and you say, hey, do you know so-and-so out here? Uh, my maiden name was Cole, so Stephanie is my first name, but um, it's just kind of interesting how everything kind of rolls back around from the beginning. Sooner or later, you kind of go back to your roots. So coming here and being able to have everybody here and Buggy here too is a really cool thing because you kind of see your old stomping grounds and you get re-familiarized with different places and people. Right. And it's always good to have that home connection always kind of bring you back to home. So yeah, that's gr it's great to be back in Little Falls. Do you have good memories of Little Falls? You know, I do. I really do. I have good memories of Little Falls. You know, I did musical theater when I was younger. Okay hole in the day uh, musical yes. theater and so on so I did some of those things when I was younger and uh, yeah I think it's you know a good place to grow up because it's nice and you know when you look at smaller towns the benefit is it's more wholesome and that kind of stuff which is really cool so it's nice to be able to come back and experience that wholesomeness I think sometimes when you get to the city you lose a lot of that everybody becomes a number you know everyone just the crowds get a lot bigger, but here you can have more one-on-one -on -one interaction with people, which is good. Not always a good thing sometimes, but it's nice to be able to have people that you can connect with, that you kind of grow up with, and you have that core with since you're just young all the way up. It was just really nice. Yeah, I mean, we kind of flip-flop. I went from the cities here. You went from here to the cities, so it's kind of a, a difference in that a little bit. But I think uh, the small town... You know, there's some negatives to a small town because yes. everybody knows your business. Yes, exactly. That's what I was referring to. <laughs> you get some of that. But, you know, as long as everyone minds their own business and realizes, hey, we're all in this together, you know. Um, but, yeah, it is. There's there's advantages and disadvantages. But I think for the most part, having the wholesomeness in the smaller environment is really good, especially for raising kids. I think it's nice. Awesome. All right. I think these boys are ready yeah, to go. They're, 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 they're excited. Uh, we're excited, too, here. Once again, the band is Alarm. For war and uh, another single coming up right now. You guys ready to roll? Yes, sir. This song's called Love and Not Hate. All righty. Once again here on FM 94 is The Dark. Coming at ya, same dog gonna smack ya, American rap boy. Gonna bank your flank and throw the spank ya. With the tooth that gleam, the cat the booth, got the gold yellow tooth for proof. Time take a name, chicken boo, we take a tooth, take chicken name, figure looking good. Straight from the hood, middle wood, never understood it was good. They call us AFW, we American rockers, busting arms of time, and you know you can stop us. Bet y'all, taking up a guess, you're ready all for home, boy, to protect. No, say y'all, hey, let me bust it in freestyle Jiggy, jump up, jump up, no need to go wild Wanna find out what I just said? Better check your head They call us enemies of the state But not rap, but wait for preaching love And not hate the days to day It's hot, too late to clean your sight I'll meet your face As the load of bacon chains and escape Open your eyes or realize time flies No tell no when it's your time to die Open your eyes or realize time flies No tell no when it's your time to die I'm gonna testify But the one who was most nice Tell me be for fine, did you that my people John Air, hammer grace is where I wanna be Away from a pot for sea Two for fantasy, which I've been living my whole life Thought I had a free ride, but in Deuteronomy 5 I took a gander, found God Sander Nailed it to my heart, never chewed a pot Gonna shake thee Break thee, thoroughly amaze thee. Some people calling me crazy. Fell out from an Audi. There goes Sam Dog Channel with the homies. Jesus Christ is the one and the only. Everyone else is a fake and a phony. No one ever told me. No JC, you burn eternal enemies of the 
stay for not fast. No favor, put your love and I take days to day. Stop too late to clean your slate and meet your fate. As a loader, make a change and escape. Open your eyes and realize time flies. No time to win, it's your time to die. Open your eyes and realize time flies. No time to win, it's your time to die. Yeah! Nice. Very nice. Very nice, guys. Good job. Very good. Almost has a little uh, red hot chili pepper sound in that one. I, I kind of like that, actually. Minnesota roots on that little funky. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that too. We're I doing can... that on heavy guitars, you know, live, obviously, so it's not com- like coming off like that. <laughs> you know what, though? I love music stripped down because it's it's its true element. I mean, you can't yeah, me hide you, you can't hide behind anything right. whatsoever. And having Buggy just uh, right on the vocals right there, somebody listening is like, "Oh, it's a kind of it's an interesting sound," but it's like, no, that's that's real live yeah. music, and that's that's the beauty of it. Yeah, you can see if the song's working. You take all that other stuff out of there. I remember checking out a band a long time ago that had amazing lead guitar to it, and um, I bought the CD and I was listening to it, and it was like. I was suffering to get to the lead guitar parts. <laughs> it never <laughs> stuck because, you know, if the song doesn't work, I don't know, you can't polish it up. Right. right. Now, obviously, you, we're your first stop today, tonight. Uh, you got other things coming up yet this week. Uh, sounds like you're going to Mankato, maybe, and De, uh, what, Dubuque, I hear? Yeah, or? The, yes, sir. We're going to Dubuque, Iowa. We're going to Mankato, Minnesota. We'll be in um, Wisconsin and Illinois, North Dakota, South Dakota. So we'll be around around that area. So yeah. kind of doing the upper Midwest here for yes, now. Yes, sir. Yep, for the first start out. Yep. And, and then you'd mentioned something about East Coast too and touring, maybe down the road, huh? Yeah. Can't yeah. leak anything out yet. We got guys working on stuff. It's too so you early hear yet. stories and you never want to jump on anything. Exactly. Jump too high on anything <laughs> until you know it's grounded, right? Absolutely. Hey, you know, the the band Alarm for War, how can people find out more information about you guys? Uh, what's the best way to do this, Buggy? And you're you're a 13-year-old, so you probably know all the, the social media Absolutely. stuff, right? Yeah. Even right. though mom says you're not on it. <laughs> That's what she said. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, it's alarmforwar.com. Again, alarmforwar.com to find us on the web. We got Alarm for War on Facebook, Alarm for War on Twitter, and on Instagram. Check us out, and we love to hear from you. Very cool. I, I, we found it on iTunes, too, as well. Yeah, so we, I, yeah we got the um, audio pieces on um, iTunes and Amazon pre-orders and orders and stuff like that. We got shirt shipments, so check us out on the web. And um, you check us out on YouTube, too. We got the Day Turn to Night video, obviously, that you mentioned earlier, and then uh, Love and Not Hate video. So come check us out. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, any last comments for you guys out there, uh, for uh, the listeners? Buggy or you, Kisa? Well, we're grateful to be here, grateful for everybody's ear. Um, I can shout out to Bruce out here in Little Falls. Okay. He's a guy I know up here. So we got ties out here already, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for having us, James. Really appreciate you guys taking us, taking the time to... Uh, have us in your studio. Yeah, we definitely uh, appreciate you guys coming in and doing this, and uh, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. And uh, hopefully, we can uh, hook up maybe here in six months or so again. Yeah, and uh, you can kind of give us uh, an update at what's happened because I think a lot is going to happen here in the next three. Mom's shaking her head. Yes, a lot's going to happen in the next three to six months. So I think wow. uh, we're going to get a real true. Uh, feel of what this band's really going to do here in the next six months. I wish you nothing but the best. And uh, you know what? The best thing about it is we're going to spin your latest song right now, uh, Day Turn Tonight. Are you cool with that? We're great with that. Thank you. All right, once again, that's Buggy. That is Kisa and Mom Steph in studio. The band is called Alarm for War. Their latest song is called Day Turn Tonight. You're hearing it right now on FM. You're hearing it right now on FM. You're hearing it right now.